good morning students i welcome you to the fourth session of my on electrochemistry in today's session we'll be discussing about the construction and working of calomel and silver silver chloride electrodes so these two electrodes are considered as a secondary reference electrodes then we'll be discussing about electrochemical series and its significance then also we'll be learning how to calculate equilibrium constant for a cell reaction and how to predict the spontaneity of a redox reaction so these are the topics we'll be discussing today so in the last session that is third session at the end i discussed about the standard hydrogen gas electrode or simply standard hydrogen electrode which is a considered as a primary reference electrode and we learned that uh, for constructing standard hydrogen electrode we have to maintain the pressure of hydrogen gas at one bar in earlier books they consider one atmospheric pressure now it is considered as one bar pressure so pressure of the hydrogen gas should be one bar temperature should be 298 kelvin and hydrogen concentration of the hcl used should be 1 molar so when these conditions are rigorously maintained then that electrode or hydrogen electrode functions as standard hydrogen electrode and the standard hydrogen electrode is used to measure potentials of all other electrodes i have told in the earlier classes that single electrodes have no significance only when you have a pair of electrodes is possible to construct a cell and obtain some work so in order to determine uh, any electrode potential we require another electrode whose potential is known therefore in order to determine the electrode potentials scientists considered standard hydrogen electrode as a reference electrode and uh, its potential is taken as zero it's assumed to be zero it doesn't mean that no potential is developed at the electrode but it is assumed to be zero so assuming potential of standard hydrogen electrode as zero all the other electrodes whose potentials are to be measured under standard conditions are connected to shg and their potentials are determined and they are called standard electrode potentials so in one of my earlier classes i have told standard electrode potential is the potential developed at an electrode when the concentration of the electrolyte is 1 molar and temperature is 298 kelvin and if it is a gas electrode pressure should be 1 bar okay so only when these conditions of concentration pressure and temperature are maintained constant as denoted earlier as explained earlier then the electrode potentials are called as standard electrode potentials so and i also told you that by iupac convention we always speak of reduction potentials so i repeat whenever you hear the term electrode potential take it for granted it is a reduction potential unless it is specified when i say oxidation potential then it is oxidation potential if it is simply electrode potential it is i am speaking about only reduction potential right so the electrodes whose potentials are to be determined are connected to standard hydrogen electrode under standard conditions and the potentials are determined and they are called standard electrode potentials denoted by e not and these standard electrode potentials are systematically arranged so in, in some textbooks these uh, standard electrode potentials may be arranged in the decreasing order uh, in other textbooks the standard electrode potentials may be arranged in increasing order so when i say electrochemical series electrochemical series is nothing but the systematic arrangement of standard electrode potentials 
So do not be under impression that the electrochemical series the arrange, is the arrangement of uh, standard electric potentials in increasing order or as some books say that it is the arrangement of uh, standard electric potentials in decreasing order. No. So it's only a electrochemical series is a systematic arrangement of standard electro potentials. So systematic arrangement means it could be either in increasing order of the arrangement or it could be decreasing order of the electro potentials. So here uh, I have written in decreasing order. There are hundreds of standard electro potentials of which I have noted down. I have written on the board a few. So these few examples will help us in understanding the significance of uh, electrochemical series and also it helps us in calculating uh, equal constant or in predicting the feasibility of a reaction. So after discussing about electrochemical series and its significance and applications of electrochemical series, I will come back to this. Okay. So, do not worry, I will be discussing about these secondary reference electrodes after I complete the discussion on electrochemical series and its applications. So, I repeat, so electrochemical series is the systematic arrangement of uh, standard electrode potentials, right. So here, what is the significance? What information can we get from this electrochemical series? So here, in the electrochemical series, fluorine electrode has got the highest reduction potential means it gets easily reduced because fluorine is the most electronegative element in the periodic table so it readily accepts electrons and gets reduced therefore fluorine gets easily reduced therefore it has got highest reduction potential since it has got highest reduction potential this acts as a the strongest oxidizing agent among the, the electrodes that are found. Among all the oxidizing agents, fluorine is the strongest oxidizing agent. Similarly, the electrode whose reduction potential is the least, the lowest electrode potential is possessed by lithium electrode. So when you look at this table or the top, with highest reduction potential, we have fluorine. At the bottom, with the lowest reduction potential, we have fluorine. That's so, lithium. So, lithium is the strongest reducing agent. Strongest reducing agent. Because this gets easily reduced. Therefore, it acts as a oxidizing agent because in any redox reaction oxidizing agent gets reduced and a reducing agent gets oxidized therefore since the fluorine has the highest reduction potential it acts as the strongest oxidizing agent and the lithium has got the lowest reduction potential in the sense it is very difficult to reduce when you look at the electrode potential so lithium should act as weakest oxidizing agent or in other words, it will be strongest reducing agents. You might have learned this alkali metals and alkaline, alkaline earth metals. First group and second group metals readily lose electrons. So they act as reducing agents. So as we move down the periodic uh, electrochemical series here, here I have written electrochemical electrode potentials in decreasing order. So as I move down, oxidizing power decreases and as I move from the bottom to top reducing power increases so with the knowledge of these standard electrode potentials it is possible for us to compare the oxidizing or reducing powers okay so one of the important applications of uh, electrochemical series is it is possible to compare oxidizing power or reducing power of the species. For example, if you consider, uh, compare the reducing power so like, like sodium. I have not written sodium here. So I, let me take zinc 
magnesium, silver, and gold. So the question is like, compare the reducing power of these metals. So in the increasing order, arrange them in the increasing order of a reducing power. How to arrange them in the increasing order of reducing power? So we, the, among these four, the species with the lowest reducing power to species with the highest reducing power. So how to arrange them? So this problem can be solved with the knowledge of uh, uh, standard electro potentials. Like I said, here as we move down, uh, oxidizing power decreases. And as we move up, okay, oxidizing power decreases. Whereas reducing power increases. Reducing power increases. So higher the reduction potential means easier is the reduction. So easier the reduction means stronger the oxidizing power or higher the oxidizing power or lesser the reducing power. Right. So if you want to arrange in the order of increasing the reducing power, we saw starting with the, the species with the lowest reducing power to highest reducing power. So of these four species, which has got the lowest reducing power, the one with the highest reduction potential. So highest reduction potential is that of gold. So gold has a lower reducing power followed by silver. Then Silver has a lower reducing power than zinc followed by magnesium. So this is the order of a increasing the reducing power. Similar we can also, if we are asked to write in the order of increasing oxidizing power, this series would be exactly reverse. That's all. Right? So from the knowledge of uh, E0 values, it is possible to compare oxidizing or reducing powers of different species. So in the four examples which are considered zinc, magnesium, silver and gold, from the E0 values, gold has got highest E0 values, so it will be strongest oxidizing agent or weakest reducing agent among these four. So I have written first here, followed by silver, followed by zinc, followed by magnesium. So you should remember, higher the reduction potential, easier is the reduction, therefore stronger is oxidizing power. Once oxidizing power is higher, so automatically reducing power will be lesser, right? So this is how we can compare the oxidizing or reducing powers of uh, uh, different species. So this is one of the important applications of uh, electrochemical series and in the syllabus we have only two applications mentioned one is calculation of equilibrium constant the other one is prediction of spontaneity of a redox reaction because when we speak of electrochemical reactions it is always redox reactions right so let us see how to calculate equal constant with the knowledge of standard electrode potentials right so first application is how calculation of k capital k denotes a equilibrium constant small k in chemistry it denotes a uh, field chemistry it denotes a rate constant of course small k also denotes a Boltzmann constant but in the Physical chemistry, we always represent rate constant by small k. So capital K indicates equilibrium constant. Uh, in some books, they may also write like this. So it is possible to calculate equilibrium constant with the help of electrochemical series. So what is the relation between the standard electrode potential and equilibrium constant. In thermodynamics, you might have learned the relation of this type.
the relation between the free energy, standard free energy change and equilibrium constant. Okay, this is the standard equation in thermodynamics that we have learned. So delta Z is equal to delta G naught plus R T log K E. At equilibrium, actually this is Q, we take this Q, at equilibrium, delta Z is equal to 0. So we write this as, this equation can be written as what? R T log base E. Now Q is replaced by K. Q is called reaction quotient. I said in the earlier session of mine that the expression for reaction quotient and equilibrium constant are the same. The only difference is equilibrium constant, equilibrium constant is a constant at constant temperature. Whereas reaction quotient varies. In the beginning of the, as the reaction proceeds, a, a reversible reaction, as it proceeds from one end, reaction quotient goes on changing and once the equilibrium is established, reaction quotient will attain a constant value. That constant value of Q is called as equilibrium constant. Right. So, we have this expression related to standard free energy change with the equilibrium constant. So, we can write this as delta Z naught is equal to minus Rt log base E K. So, using this equation, that is delta G naught is equal to minus Rt natural logarithm K, if we convert it to log base 10, we can also write this as minus 2.3 Rt log K. So, this is the relation between equal constant and standard free energy change. So, our aim is to calculate equilibrium constant. So, in order to calculate equilibrium constant, we should know delta Z naught. And there is a relation between standard free energy change and standard electric potential. And that relation is given by this. Delta Z naught is equal to minus N F E naught, where N stands for number of electrons involved in the redox reaction. F stands for Faraday, there is 96,500 coulombs, I already stored. One Faraday is the charge carried by one mole of electrons. That is less than 96,500 coulombs, but for all practical purposes or for all calculation purposes, we take a round figure of 96,500 coulombs. E naught is a standard electrode potential, right. So, E naught value can be taken from the electrochemical series. E naught value can be taken from electrochemical series. Knowing E naught value, we can calculate delta Z naught. From delta Z naught, we can calculate log K. So, this can also be written as minus NF E naught is equal to minus 2.3 NR3 RT log K. So, minus minus will get cancelled. <coughs> so, E naught for a reaction can be calculated from uh, the electrochemical series. So, knowing E naught, we can calculate K value. For example, if you consider a reaction of this type, this reaction, let me consider the reaction occurring a galvanic cell. Ah, sorry, Daniel cell. Daniel cell is an example of galvanic cell. So, this is the reaction that occurs in Daniel cell. This is a reversible reaction. Okay, it's a uh, Daniel cell is a reversible cell right so how to calculate equal constant of this reaction so in order to calculate equal constant for this reaction you calculate e naught of this cell e naught of this cell is what E naught of copper minus E naught of zinc electrode. Because we have learned zinc electrode acts as anode, copper electrode acts as cathode. So E naught of this reaction would be equal to what? E naught of cathode minus E naught of zinc electrode. We have already done this. So E naught of uh, that reaction, E naught cell is equal to 1.10 volts. How did you get this? 0.34 
volts is the reduction potential of copper and minus 0.6 volts is the reduction potential of zinc so this will be equal to 1.10 volts so e naught of this reaction is 1.10 volts so what is e naught value 1.10 volts so we have a number of electrons involved is 2 into 96500 into e naught is 1.10 volts is equal to 2.303 rt log k and when i derive the the nernst equation we by substituting value of r t as 298 kelvin and f 96500 coulombs so this entire thing substituting the value of r as 8.314 joules per kelvin per mole p as 298 kelvin f as 96500 coulombs we have this 0 0.0591 by n log k so you e not have calculated and n is 2 because reaction is this 2 electrons are involved zinc loses 2 electrons and copper ion gains 2 electrons so zinc is converted to Zn2 plus copper 2 plus ion is converted to copper so 2 electrons are involved in this reaction this is 2 so by simplifying this we can calculate equilibrium constant so this is how we can calculate equal constant for any reaction with the knowledge of E0 because knowing E0 values and knowing the number of electrons involved in the reaction we can calculate equal constant then second application is prediction of spontaneity of a reaction so knowing with the knowledge of E0 values it is possible to predict whether a given redox reaction is a spontaneous or non-spontaneous spontaneous means what that reaction is feasible means it occurs okay so spontaneity is nothing but feasibility feasibility is nothing but reaction is possible the possibility reaction occurs so now let us see all right i take these examples reaction this is a redox reaction where zinc is oxidized and magnesium ions are reduced so i want to know whether this reaction is feasible whether this reaction occurs at ordinary conditions All right if i simply place zinc rod into magnesium chloride or magnesium sulfate solution zinc should dissolve and magnesium metal should get separated so this is possible to you we, we can test in the laboratory we place a zinc rod into magnesium chloride solution or magnesium sulfate solution if zinc dissolves and magnesium separates if it precipitates out then this reaction is feasible now let us see whether this react without conducting the experiment we can say whether this is possible this reaction is feasible or not how calculate e naught of this reaction E naught for this reaction. If E naught is a positive, reaction is feasible. By calculating E naught for this reaction, if E naught comes out to be positive, then the reaction is feasible. If E naught turns out to be negative, it is non spontaneous. Uh, this is spontaneous. If E naught turns out to be negative, uh, then uh, the reaction is non spontaneous. All right. So remember, if E naught value for the reaction is positive, then reaction is feasible. If E naught comes out to be negative, then that reaction is non-spontaneous. It doesn't occur. Right. So now let us see. What is the E naught for this reaction? What is the electrode here, which acts as anode and which acts as cathode? Zinc is undergoing oxidation. Means zinc electrode is acting as anode. Magnesium ions are getting reduced. Therefore, magnesium electrode acts as cathode. So, we calculate 
E naught for this reaction. E naught cathode minus E naught anode. Or E naught RHS minus E naught LHS. Or E naught right, right hand side electrode minus E naught left hand side electrode. You can use any denotion you want. So, what is E naught of magnesium? E naught of magnesium is minus 2.52 volts. Then E naught of zinc is minus 0.76 volts. So this becomes minus 2.52 plus 0.76 volts. So the net E naught value is a negative. So if we subtract, uh, we get uh, 1. Point, uh, two five. Okay. So when we subtract 0.76. Okay. So it is a minus 1.76 volts. So V naught value is found to be minus. In the sense, this reaction does not occur. In the sense, reaction is not feasible. In the sense, forward reaction is not feasible. But what about backward reaction? For backward reaction, what will be in R? It will be plus 1.76 volts. Isn't it? Here, zinc is acting as anode. Magnesium is acting as cathode in the forward direction. Therefore, E0 is turning out to be negative. So, forward reaction is not feasible. But if you reverse the reaction, if you write like this, <coughs> magnesium This is the reverse reaction. For this, E0 would be negative, uh, positive. Therefore, this reaction is feasible. Okay, it's very simple. When forward reaction is not feasible, it goes without saying backward reaction is feasible. Or, if forward reaction is feasible, backward reaction will be non-spontaneous. Non, non Remember, if forward reaction is spontaneous, backward reaction will be non-spontaneous. So the spontaneity of the reaction can be decided or predicted by calculating E0 value. If E0 value turns out to be positive, then reaction is feasible. If E0 value of the reaction is negative, then the reaction is non-spontaneous in forward direction. It will be spontaneous in backward direction, right? So that's how we can predict the spontaneity and we can calculate equilibrium constant. So after knowing what is electrochemical series and what is its, there are many applications. I said one, a, a, a comparison of oxidizing or reducing power. There are many other applications. And other two applications that are, that are mentioned in, to, in the syllabus are calculation of equilibrium constant, I have discussed, and the prediction of spontaneity of a reaction. So with this, we'll come, go back to what? The construction and working of a calomel and silver, silver chloride electrodes. Uh, standard hydrogen electrode is a very difficult in construction. Difficult in the sense, we, it is not possible to maintain constant pressure of one bar or one atmosphere for hydrogen gas. And also, it is very difficult to maintain one molar H plus and concentration in one molar HCl because and the platinized platinum electrode H plus ions get adsorbed. Therefore, it leads to change in concentration of H plus ions. So, because of these two difficulties, one is maintaining a constant pressure of one atmosphere or one bar for hydrogen gas is difficult. Number two, maintaining one molar H plus ion concentration is also difficult. Therefore, it's not always possible to construct SHE and US. So, alternative electrodes have been devised. What are those alternative reference electrodes? So, alternative reference electrodes are calomel electrode and silver, silver chloride electrode. So, these are called as a secondary reference electrodes. SHE is a primary reference electrode. And these calomel electrode and silver silver chloride electrodes are called secondary reference electrodes. Okay, 
Because these are easy to construct and they can be maintained for a longer period. And uh, electro potentials of these electrodes are reproducible. We can have, always have a constant potential. Right. So now let us see how to construct a calomel electrode. So a calomel electrode is constructed by taking a tube and at the bottom of the tube mercury is placed and over this mercury a paste of mercurous chloride paste of mercurous chloride in the sense paste obtained from by mixing mercurous chloride mercuric chloride is HgCl2 mercurous chloride is Hg2Cl2 it occurs as a dimer so this mercurous chloride paste is called as calomel ok so over this KCL solution is placed usually we use a saturated KCL I will tell you why ok this is saturated KCL solution and this is sealed and a platinum wire is inserted for making electrical con connections and this inter is enclosed in outer cylinder, outer tube there will be a small filter here and a sa saturated KCL solution will be placed here saturated KCL solution why we use a saturated KCL solution is when it is saturated KCL solution Cl minus ion concentration does not change because what happens during storage if some water evaporates concentration of KCL changes if I fill this with one molar KCL solution what happens upon storage if some water evaporates one molar KCL becomes more than one molar so concentration of Cl minus ions cannot be kept constant during storage therefore we use a saturated KCL so that the Cl minus ion concentration remains constant and e electrode potential also remains constant therefore we this is called whenever we use saturated KCL solution this uh, is called as a saturated calomel electrode and its electrode potential at 25 degrees Celsius is 0.2422 volts so at 25 degrees Celsius or 298 Kelvin the electrode potential of this electrode cal saturated calomel electrode is 0.2422 if you change the concentration of KCL uh, electrode potential of calomel changes for one molar it's different for 0.1 molar it's different so we use saturated calomel electrode so that Cl minus and concentration remains constant so this is the construction of a calomel electrode and how does it work and this is used as secondary reference electrode so when it can be connected to another electrode which is called indicator electrode we will understand the term indicator electrode when I take up potentiometry titrations in future right so calomel electrode how does it work it is again an example of a reversible electrode means it can act as an anode or cathode so what is the electrode reaction that takes place So this is the reaction that occurs at a calomel electrode when it is connected to another electrode. If calomel electrode when connected to other electrode acts as cathode, if calomel electrodes are acts as cathode then forward reaction takes place. Mercurous chloride is reduced to mercury. If it acts as anode then backward reaction takes place where mercury gets oxidized. Right. So this is the net electrode reaction are taking place at calomel electrode so what is the electro potential of this reaction E is equal to E naught calomel plus 0 0.0591 by 2 I have taken plus sign here when I take plus sign here in the nonce equation reactants are written in the numerator products are written in the denominator or if I put minus sign here products are written in the numerator reactants are written in the denominator 
Look here, this is a pure liquid and this is a pure solid. Therefore, concentration of pure liquid or pure concentration uh, pure solid is taken as one molar. Activity of pure liquid or pure solid is taken as one unity. Therefore, they, they do not appear in the expression. Only this appears in the expression. So E naught minus 0 0.0591 log Cl minus. In the sense, this electrode potential depends upon Cl minus and concentration, and this electrode is said to be reversible with respect to Cl minus ions. Okay, so this is the working of a calomel electrode. We have seen construction, and this is working, and this is the cell reaction, the electro reaction taking place at calomel. It can behave as an anode or a cathode. So if I connect this calomel electrode to saturated calomel electrode to silver electrode, saturated calomel electrode potential is 0 0.2422 volts, saturated E naught of that. And E naught of silver is 0.8 volts. So reduction potential of silver is more. So silver electrode acts as cathode, this acts, this acts as anode. If I connect to zinc electrode, zinc reduction potential is minus 0 0.74 volts. This is plus 2.422 volts. So zinc electrode acts as anode, this acts as cathode. Therefore, it serves as an anode or a cathode depending upon the other electrode with which it is connected. Therefore, it's a reversible electrode. And this is a reversible cell reaction. And this calomel electrode is reversible with respect to Cl minus ion concentration. That's the reason why we keep Cl minus ion concentration so that electrode potential remains constant. That's why we use saturated KCl solution. So that Cl minus ion concentration during storage does not change. Right. This is about a calomel electrode and it has constant and reproducible E electrode potential. Therefore, it's most widely used. Okay. And next electrode is silver, silver chloride electrode. Both these electrodes, calomel and silver, silver chloride electrodes are examples of metal, insoluble metal ion electrodes. There are four categories of electrodes. Metal, metal ion electrodes, gas electrodes, metal, insoluble metal ion electrodes, then redox electrodes. So calomel electrode and silver, silver chloride electrodes are examples of metal, metal insoluble metal ion electrodes so what is a metal insoluble insoluble salt electrode silver is a metal silver chloride is insoluble salt in water calomel what is that mercurous chloride so mercury is a metal it's a liquid metal mercurous chloride is insoluble salt so it's a metal insoluble metal salt ion electrode right so second secondary reference electrode which is the second one first one is calomel which is most widely used along with calomel we can also use a silver silver chloride electrode so how is this silver silver chloride electrode is constructed so a silver rod is taken this is a silver rod and the surface of this is coated with the silver chloride so silver chloride salt is electrolytically deposited on silver rod. So silver chloride is electrolytically deposited over silver rod. And this is a dipped. This is placed in KCL or HCL solutions. You can but so the silver silver chloride electrode is placed in a KCL or HCL solution. It should have a solution containing the chloride ions. Okay, so we use either KCL or HCL. So this is the construction of a silver silver chloride electrode. And what is the electrode reaction that takes place here? So electrode reaction is this. We always consider reduction process according to IPAC convention. So this is the electrode reaction that occurs at silver, silver chloride electrode. 
So if this acts as cathode, pharo reaction will be taking place. If it acts as anode, reverse reaction will be taking place. So what is the electro potential of this? So E naught of E naught minus 0 0.0591 by 1 log minus sign here. Products I take in the numerator. Silver is a solid. Silver chloride is also solid. So activity of these are taken as unity. They don't appear in equivalent constant expression. So we have this expression for the electro potential. So E naught is constant. So electro potential of this varies with the Cl minus. So this electrode is reversible with respect to Cl minus ions. So this is a, a buster construction and working of a calomel and silver silver chloride electrode. So let me stop here. I will continue in the next session. Thank you. Please comment in the comment box.